Franklin's turn. Pick a number between 10 and 20. The answer is 12. Huh, not bad. Are you starting? Yep, go. One, two. Ten, eleven, twelve. Go, 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 go. <laughs> that way. I'm trying, okay? I'm trying to go that way. Go, 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 go. <laughs> I was trying to go that way the whole time. <laughs> Alright, so today we're looking at section 4-4C and this is going to be the worksheet review. So if you have not attempted the worksheet, make sure you pause the video, attempt the worksheet and then come back to this video because this video is just going to be going over the solutions for the worksheet. Now this worksheet is good practice for the quiz on Thursday. The quiz will be covering 4-4 with some concepts from 4-3B. Um, so this is good. You might make this as good quiz review. So make sure you guys know how to do all these problems um, in preparation for Thursday. All right. So our first example is solve for x. So actually, want to get a number for x. Number one, I'm going to take this logarithm. So log base six of x is equal to negative two. I'm going to recycle. I get 6 to the negative 2 is equal to x. I remember a negative exponent flips everything. So if it's top goes to the bottom, bottom goes to the top. Since this is on top, it will go to the bottom. And I get x is equal to 1 over 6 squared. 6 squared is 36, so I get x is equal to 1 over 36. Our second question, I recycle. I believe I've done this question before. I get root 3 raised to the power of x is equal to 1 over 27. Now I'm going to rewrite that radical with 3 raised to the 1 half x is equal to, I'm going to rewrite the 1 over 27 as 27 raised to the negative 1. I move it up to the top, that negative exponent flips it. And then I'm going to write this as 3 to the 1 half x is equal to 3 raised to the negative 3. And how I got the negative 3 here is that I know 3 cubed equals 27, but I also have the negative 1 up here. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Now since my bases are equal, that means my exponents must also be equal. So I get 1 half x is equal to negative 3. Therefore, x is equal to negative 6. Multiply both sides by 2. x equals negative 6. Question 3. I recycle. 3 to the x is equal to 9. So what does x have to be to make 3 9? Well, I know that 3 squared is 9, so x is equal to 2. Number 4. I recycle. 4 to the x is equal to 1 over 16. 4 to the x is equal to 16 to the negative 1 because I need to bring that 16 upwards. Um, so negative exponent does that. Now 4 to the x is equal to, well, what times what equals 16? Well, 4 squared is 16, but I have that negative exponent, so it's a negative 2. My bases are the same, which means my exponents must be equal. So I get x is equal to negative 2. Question 5 and 6, it says simplify and evaluate each logarithm. So here, notice that I'm adding. So when you add, remember you can combine this as one multiplication problem. So I can rewrite this, combine these, and notice they both have the same base, which they have to have the same base. I can rewrite this as log base 2 of 8 times 4, 
Well, 8 times 4 is 32. Let's go in and set this equal to x to evaluate the logarithm. So I just simplified it. This is the simplifying right here. And I want to actually solve for evaluate. So I recycle 2 to the x equals 32. Um, I could write this like this. 2 to the x is equal to 2 to what power is equal to 32? Or 2 to the fifth power is equal to 32. So since my bases are equal, my exponents must be equal. So x is equal to 5. That's my answer. All right, question six, I'm subtracting. So subtraction is division. I do have the same base, that's important. So I get log base two of eight divided by four. Now eight divided by four is obviously two. So I can set this equal to, I just simplified. So simplified, now let's evaluate. Set equal to x, I recycle. Two to the x is equal to two which means x has to be x equals 1. And that's it. Question 7, log of 1,000. Now notice there is no base here. What's my base? Well, this is my common logarithm. The base is 10. So to evaluate this, I'm going to take log base 10 of 1,000, set it equal to x. I recycle. After I recycle, I get 10 to the x is equal to 1,000. That's the same thing as 10 to the x is equal to 10 cubed equals 1,000, so x equals 3. Now, another way I could do this, um, I could write it like this. Log base 10 of 1,000. And then I could rewrite this as log base 10 of 10 cubed equals x. Well, here, this would be double b. Because you see, those two numbers are the same. So they cancel each other out, and I'm left with my solution is the exponent. So hopefully you see that there are different ways to solve these. It's really what makes the most sense to you or what is the easiest for you. All right, <clears throat> question eight. I'm going to, um, a few different ways I could do this again, but I think the easiest way to solve this one, log base four of 64 squared I'm going to plug this one. So remember with plugging, that's where you take the exponent and we're going to move it to the front. So when I move it to the front, that's going to give me two times log base four of 64. And then I'm going to hold on to this two times for a bit. I'm going to solve the logarithm. So what does this log solve to? Well, I could write it like log base 4 of 64 equals x. I'm going to recycle. I get 4 to the x is equal to 64. Now, 4 to what power is equal to 64? Well, it's going to be x has to be equal to 3. Then I take this and I plug it back in here. I get 2 times 3, which gives me 6. So this original logarithm, that's when you evaluate it, that is equal to 6. And you can write it like this down here, or you can write it up here like that. I'll accept either. All right, question 9. Hopefully this one takes you about two seconds to solve because this is just double b. You see that these two numbers are the same, so they cancel out. So my answer is just 
x plus 1. That's my solution. Question 10. Um, let's go ahead and log base 3 of 27 raised to the power 4. I'm going to plug this. The reason I know how to plug it is because I have that exponent there. So when I plug it, I move it down to the front. And I get 4 times log base 3 of 27. I'm going to solve the logarithm. To solve this logarithm gives me log base 3 of 27 equals x. I recycle. That gives me 3 to the x is equal to 27. Now 3 cubed is 27. So x is equal to 3. I, re I substitute that back in. I get 4 times 3. And that gives me 12. That's my solution for this logarithm. Question 11. Um, again, this one should take you about 2-3 seconds to solve because now this one, maybe this one's a little bit more tricky, but you take 10 raised to the lo oops, log of 8. Well, what's my base here? It's not written, so when it's not written, that's an assumed 10. It's a common logarithm. Now, since you have a common logarithm, this is, again, the case of double B. Those numbers are the same, so they cancel each other out. Now, my answer here is just 8. It's not log 8. It's just 8. Just 8. So those cancel out, the logarithms dropped, and your answer is 8. So you can rewrite this as 10 raised to the log of 8 is equal to 8. Either of these work. Question 12. You have log base 5 of 125 squared. I'm going to go ahead and plug this. Again, you have that exponent there, so I'm going to plug it. Move it down to the front, you get 2 times log base 5 of 125. 2 times, let's evaluate this logarithm. You get log base 5 of 125 equals x. I recycle. 5 to the x is equal to 125. Um, now 5 cubed is 125, so x is equal to... 3. So I take that number, substitute it back in for the logarithm because that's what this is equal to. So I get 2 times 3, which is 6. That's my answer. Question 13. Now, hopefully you guys have watched the video this far because if you have watched the video this far, then you will know that I question like this will be on the quiz and I have not gone over this type of question in my previous lecture videos so if you've watched the video thus far you will have some important information for the quiz so you need to know how to do this type of question because it will be on the quiz tomorrow and if you've watched this far don't talk about it to anybody else because I'm rewarding you for watching the videos. Now to solve these types of questions, you will need to use your calculator to solve them. And I'll kind of walk you guys through the steps on how to do this. So the very first thing that we're going to do is treat this like, let's say you had x times 2 is equal to 4. So this is just a example. Unrelated. I mean, it's related, but it's slightly different from this. So let's say I had something like this. Now how would I solve for x here? Well, I could rewrite this as 2x equals 4, and I divide both sides by 2, and get that x is equal to 2. So that's what you could do, right? It's just basic, I mean, as simple of algebra as you can do. Just divide and then solve for x. Well, it's the same concept up here, but let's just treat 
me rewrite this really quick actually. So I have 2x minus 1 and then I also have a log of 1.3 equals um, log of 8.4. So that's what I have. Now, what I'm going to do is treat each of these as their own individual number in a sense. Uh, own individual grouping. And I'm going to divide this side by log of 1.3. Those cancel out. What I do to one side I have to do to the other. So log of 1.3. What I'm left with is 2x minus 1 equals log of 8.4 divided by log of 1.3. Now these, the base is 10 because it's a common logarithm, it's not written so it's a common logarithm. So to solve that, I'll just use my calculator and on my calculator you're going to hit log, and that's already in base 10's common logarithm, of 8.4, and then you can hit enter. So that will give you 2x minus 1 is equal to, let me do it my calculator, log of 8.4, that's equal to 0.924, divided by, then I'm going to hit log of 1.3. So log, let me do it on my calculator, log 1.3. That will give you 0.114, round it's the nearest thousandth. You can divide, so 0 0.924 divided by 0 0.114. That's going to give you 2x minus 1 is equal to 8.105 and then I just solve here. So solving and you could run to the nearest hundredth, it depends on what it asks or if you it's up to you if it doesn't specify what you're supposed to round to. So I'm going to add one to both sides. That will give you 9.105 and then try to miss that Come up here to finish. I get 2x is equal to 9.105. So I take 9.105 divided by 2, because I divide both sides by 2, and I get x is equal to 4.552. Let me erase it. x equals 4.5. Three, sorry, let me round to the nearest thousandth. Three. And that is my solution. Now, depending on what you're round to, you might get a slightly different number. So I'll give, you know, plus or minus maybe a tenth or something, or maybe probably more closer to a hundredth um, of an error. But that's the step. So you treat the logarithm as like its own grouping. Divide both sides by the logarithm because you want to isolate the x. And then you divide these. So you plug into your calculator, divide them, and then from there, it's just a basic algebra question. And the one thing you do have to be careful of is on your calculator, I went log of 8.4 over log of 1.3. I did them each individually. What did I get? 9.24, and then 1.14. So I did each of these individually, then divided both of those. You could do it as a single logarithm uh, or single uh, formula if you were to enter this into your calculator, but you have to make sure that when you do log of 8.4, so when you do log of 8.4, make sure you close the parentheses and then divide of log of 
parentheses 1.3 close parentheses if you don't use those parentheses and you try and do this as a single equation you're going to get a slightly different number so you have to use the parentheses and the reason for that is if you don't use the parentheses if you forget those and enter this I talked about this in the last video then you're going to do 8.4 divided by log and then take the log of that so remember PEMDAS order of operations is important you have to have the parentheses there so that's just something to be aware of um, but again like I said you have been rewarded for watching this video a question like that will be on the quiz alright question 14 again use your calculator to solve these um, this is where you change the base so I'm going to rewrite this as log base, I'm going to change the base to 10 because that's what the easiest way to do on a calculator, log base 10 of 21 over log base 10 of 4 so that goes to the top that goes to the bottom um, write as a single logarithm and then solve and when you enter that into your calculator that will give you 2.196 that's the solution there question 15 log I'm going to convert this to a single logarithm or I'm sorry I'm going to change the base and write log of 30 divided by log base 10 of 1 -third. When I enter that into my calculator, that will give me 3.096. Let me double check myself. Log of 30 divided by log of 1 third. Just a second. I'm sorry, I forgot my negative should be negative. So why do you always double check yourself? Negative. Um, 3.096. And again, a slight rounding error is okay. Uh, but it is a negative. Don't forget the negative. All right, so that is the worksheet. So this is pretty similar to what you'll be expecting on the quiz. On Thursday at 10 a.m., you guys do not have to submit this. Um, since you have the answers, obviously you could just, um, yeah, I'm not going to collect it. It's going to be ungraded. Uh, but make sure you do it because this will be very useful for the quiz. All right, if you guys have any questions or need help with your calculator, how to do your logarithms, shoot me an email and I can help you out. Um, but other than that, have a great day. See you.